guys, Rex here. We're going to answer some questions and answers that are coming in from the patrons on Patreon. Over on Patreon, if you uh, guys ever had a question for me that you want me to actually answer in a full video form, you can join Patreon. And if you PM me there, I will answer if it's a good question, which it usually is. I answer almost all of them in a video form, and then I post it on Patreon. This one I'm going to post here on YouTube just to let you guys know what we're talking about over there. And also, it's... Uh, is something that could be a potential safety issue too. So I figured, meh, maybe we'll just upload this on YouTube. So I'll leave links below for the Patreon channel. You subscribe annually, you save 16%. So um, here's a question coming from Mike on Patreon. Howdy, Rex. Howdy, Mike. What's up, man? Went to the range today. It was pouring down rain and wanted to get your take on a few things. I was severely underprepared for the rain, having accounted for the cold but not getting wet. Still, my rifle system performed pretty darn well and I was stoked and soaked when I left. <laughs> Besides the me mental aspect of the cold weather, I also experienced or perceived an increase in pressure due to the moisture in my chamber. Have you ever experienced this or trained to mitigate it? Yep. <laughs> okay. I had a definable or a definable audio difference and report on several firings. I chalked it up to the visible moisture in my chamber. Ooh. And the surplus ammo has been pretty consistent and my bolt closed easily. Every so often, I even tilted my barrel forward, but I'm sure it if it uh, was bad, I would know in a hurry. Not always. There is a gradient of pressure increases that can occur. Some of them are very obvious because stuff will blow up. Some of them are less obvious, preparing stuff to blow up, and some of them are just really hard on stuff. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, there's a whole gradient of pressure increases. Other than that, no fog in my optics, SWFA. I sat on my laminated tack stamp, uh, so my funny wasn't, my fanny wasn't wet, and felt pretty darn good about my groups. Thanks for all you do. Best, Mike. So his conditions were 100 yards, 43 degrees, and raining. No value 15 mile an hour per wind, but it made the rain miserable. 308 Winchester Ruger American Predator M188LR. Okay, that answers the question right off the bat. Knowing what ammo you had, if it's true M M or true M188LR, it should be a pretty good batch of ammo. I wouldn't expect. No, there's always exceptions. Uh, that's a, that's like good ammo, okay? Because if you say surplus ammo, it's like not defined all that well. And depending on which kind of surplus ammo, it could be bad. So here's the deal with moisture in the chamber. You have several different things going on, depending on the level of moisture. Um, obviously, when you have moisture in the chamber and you chamber around, it's a little tighter. So anytime you reduce the amount of space in the chamber, there's less room for that cartridge because it's going to flex a little bit and expand, right? There's less room for that cartridge to uh, do its expansion so the uh, pressure will increase. Additionally, moisture in the chamber if it steams on you because it's hot when the rifle fires, I don't know, it gets very, very hot for just a real small amount of time in the chamber, like extremely hot, right? Enough to boil water, okay? And uh, we, we talk about this in the um, seminars at nauseum and like cru excruciating detail on chamber pressure dynamics, alignment, and all the internal ballistic factors. Um, but what happens is when water boils, it'll expand volumetrically in like around 1600 times. So even if it's just a drop of water, if it steams on you, which it, depending on how hot the chamber is, when it fires, that whatever water steams is going to expand 1600 times. And that can definitely affect your pressure. So you're going to notice a louder report. You might see pressure signs in the primers, you know, iron primers or even pierced primers sometimes. Um, and it can also cause other issues like potentially hydrocavitation in which tiny micro droplets will steam and explode in a steam explosion on a micro scale. And it'll actually create a shaped um, steam pressure vector into the steel and it'll leave little cavities and holes. It'll, it'll actually um, pierce through the steel on the micro scale and pit it. Uh, that same thing happens with engines and other you know mechanical engineering type stuff. So yes, water in the chamber, you want to be dry if you can at all do it. Now you can, there's been a lot of really wet weapons. I mean, guys will come out of the water, like on the movies, you know, and they just start hammering away. It'll work usually, you know, but you don't want water in your barrel. And if you can help it, especially in a precision rifle, it's best 
it's always best to be dry. So have I trained for it? Yeah, I mean, I've learned some tricks over the years, right? There's a variety of ways I've seen guys do it. I'm always watching, right? And I've been around a little bit. So like in England, like I've been to Bisley in England, um, or like if you even go to Switzerland or if you go to East Europe, I've been all over there shooting with different guys. And I'm always watching, man. I'm always looking. And what some of those guys will do, I've seen um, plastic, like you bundle up, you just keep some plastic in your pocket. And if it's raining, you just kind of protect the optic and where you're working the bolt to keep the rain off. Problem with that is, as the rain hits it, it's so light of a material, it'll actually catch a lot of water. And then when you touch stuff, it'll run down and right into the chamber sometimes, right? So you gotta be careful with that. Um, some materials that seem to work better are the thicker, uh, waterproof, um, well, what are they, the Cordura stuff? And they'll just like, they'll attach it to the opposite side of the receiver on the scope rings or whatever they can, or depending on the chassis, they'll tie it off and they'll just like drape it over. Um, some of the match shooting guys, if you go to some of these places where they're doing competitions, I haven't seen it done in the States, um, but I've seen it in Europe a lot. They will um, actually have like, what's that, um, like a harder material, kind of a vinyl, kind of a like a fake uh, leather type stuff. And they'll put that and they'll just kind of, because that's harder and it creates more of a, a roof. So it's not, the rain hitting it isn't going to just, you know, create its own little area and it's going to soak in, right? Or not soak in, but it's going to catch it. A harder material, you kind of flap it over and it just kind of sheds the water off. And you can, like if you have a, um, you know, a veil, that's one thing guys can do too, is you just like, some of them are built into hats. I've seen snipers do that. Or you can have other ponchos or whatever and you throw that over the front of the rifle, right? Like most military guys usually have a poncho with them when they're doing their stuff, right? So you take that off and you just drape that over. The only thing that's really sticking out is enough to see through. Or they cut a little hole or or use one of the holes, right? So, yeah, um, just cover it in the rain. If it's, like, pouring, man, if it's really wet, like... And I think that's why you see it in Europe more, because it's just moist over there compared to the American West, where the American West is where the majority of long-range precision guys are. There are guys in the East, for sure, lots of them, right? Real good ones, too. Um, but the West is like kind of like where they have open country and longer distance shooting ranges. There's a bazillion thousand meter plus shooting ranges in the Western United States, whereas the East Coast is kind of hard to find because of the mountains and trees, right, and population. Um, so in the West, it's dry. So a lot of Americans are not familiar with like a lot of water, right, unless you're in the Pacific Northwest or unless you're out all the time, you know, when it is raining anyways. Most guys kind of, when the rain comes, they run in hide their heads they might as well be dead when the rain comes you know what i mean so hopefully that helps keep it covered up as much as possible i mean i don't get like we've done classes where we would actually put guys in the rain with because they're like you know scrambling to keep their stuff dry and like hold on we need to learn what happens you know short of getting water in the barrel or chamber you know keeping as dry as possible and for the most part in shooting through the rain it's not that dramatic of a, th a thing as you would think it would be. You're, I mean, you're, most of your dope lines up pretty well. As long as you can see the target, you're going to basically hit it with the same dope you would have had before. If it's pouring so hard you can't see, that'll limit your range to close enough to where... Because you got to think about it. It's not like the bullet is actually hitting the rain droplets, right? Um, in a very thick rain, if you're shooting past all where you can see, then, you know, you have issues there. But there's a shock wave in front of the bullet, too that disperses everything <laughs> on its way there. But um, extreme rain is a little different, but you're not gonna see far enough to shoot far. So you're close enough to where it's not gonna throw you off. Um, I know that big rounds, uh, when I used to uh, watch Paladins going off and stuff like that, big artillery pieces, um, they'll have problems in the rain and they actually have to uh, set the, what do they call them, the nose detonator deals on the 155 rounds and even the eight inch rounds, the big ones. They'll have to, they're built to kind of not have problems with the rain. But if you don't have them set right, sometimes they're dangerous because it's so darn rainy, they'll go off kind of right in front of where they're hammering. So the projectile in a very large diameter projectile can actually, you know, hit the rain, but that's a little different than your small arm stuff typically. Keep your stuff dry if you can, man. All right, that's my answer. If you guys uh, entertained by this or if you have other thoughts, or other observations, or other tricks, right, techniques, 
Uh, we have a full discussion in the comments in Patreon. I'm usually in those comments pretty heavy, um, you know, because I like I, I'm like those that support us and support the entire uh, Rex Reviews project who are patrons. They're physically supporting the operation. I dedicate that they get the first ninety percent of my time, and then the rest. You know, is is for everyone else. So, if you want to support the outfit, we appreciate your support. If you want to have a custom question answered, like I just did now, if you're a patron, I'll answer your question on a video. Unless it's something crazy, man, or unless it's way outside my deal, in which case I'll type. I don't. I don't know. No idea. Okay. All right. Hopefully that was fun. You guys keep it real. Have a good day. Stay positive and focus on what's important. Take some time off with your family here, you know, on the weekend, and uh, make sure you actually um, get out of this rectangle of death for a short amount of time, you know, weekly. Get away from it for at least one day a week. It's good for your uh, health, okay? All right, Rex out. Peace. This one's mine. It's fine. Don't worry about it.